about time. What's going on? Yo. Yo. Rumor Report. Rumor Report. This is the Rumor Report. Talk to him. With Angela Yee on The Breakfast Club. Well, Spinderella was not too happy about this salt and pepper biopic that was on Lifetime over the weekend. She didn't have anything to do with it. Now, when we had Salt and Pepper on The Breakfast Club, here is what Salt had to say about their ongoing disputes. It's always been a lot of attempts to compromise, to satisfy on everybody's part. And it just never got to a place where it was what she thought it, it should be. And so sometimes things come to a head, it's unfortunate, but internally, sometimes things get to a point where you have to part ways. We wish Spinderella the best. We're open to whatever can happen in the future. Um, I've reached out to her. I haven't gotten anything back, you mm -hmm. know, but I still, my heart is open. Well, Spinderella took to social media and said, sorry, sorry, but I got to speak on this Lifetime special. Too often black women who have made meaningful contributions in their industry are left out of historical narratives. Back when salt and Pepper was building our legacy, which is rooted in empowering women, I could not have dreamed that this same group would one day disempower me. Words cannot fully express my disappointment when I learned a decision was made to move forward with a Lifetime biopic that wrongfully excluded me from every aspect of development and production, all the while using my image throughout, given that I played an integral role in the group's story and success. There's nothing more unacceptable than a woman being silenced by another woman. I do, however, want to offer a huge congrats to the talented actresses that represented us, including Monique Paul, who I wish would have been given an opportunity to share my true perspective with. In reflection, I'm grateful I've managed to uphold a 30-year career, and she did say that she does have a book on the way. She said 30-plus years is a lot of content, and I'm mm -hmm. ready to share. Yeah, I mean, that sucks because Spinderella was a very important piece to that group, group. So she should have had her input involved in the film. They didn't make her look bad in the film, but they didn't, give her any, they didn't give her any real looks, period. Like, it was even that one part of the movie where they was on the bus and Salt and Pepper and were talking, and they said something like, Salt and Pepper, and Spinderella was like, and spin, you know? Yeah. I wish she'd have got a, a chance to, you know, to, to share her side, and the actress got a chance to talk to her to, to, you know, to give her feelings, but... I mean, we don't know the behind the scenes what happened though. Yeah, but you got to give her that love if you're Salt and Pepper. Fresh, Fresh Prince, if he's talking about anything Fresh Prince related, has to have Jazzy Jeff. You know, Run, Run DMC, DMC would have to have JMJ J. Yep. If, if if Jay was still here. Um, mm -hmm. And so Salt and Pepper needs Cinderella. But it's interesting because Herbie Lovebug also didn't have anything to do with developing this because they were saying this is really more about Salt and Pepper and their friendship with each other and having that group. But I think it would have made it better if. The people involved could have had their say, but I guess the story is about their friendship because they were best friends before they formed the group. So, mm, yeah, and, and there's so much history between them. That's a lot to go through. But yeah, Herbie Lovebug, who was very integral in, in forming Salt and Pepper, he also didn't have a say. Yeah, I mean, the story Our, was about Salt and Pepper, though. So that, that was the reason why, I'm sure. All right, now let's talk about Eminem. He premiered his Hire video on Saturday. Now, a clip had been circulating of him talking about UFC President Dana White before the uh, UFC fight happened on Saturday. This was that clip. I'm a huge Eminem fan, but this is a tough one. It's a tricky demon to conquer, even for someone as badass as Eminem. My prediction is disappointment for fans all over the world. Eminem, what's your response to what Dana just said? I think that People like you give people like me the fuel that they need to succeed in the first place. So I think that the best part about your opinion is that it doesn't matter. And if every fighter that you had listened to your opinion when you doubted them, you wouldn't have a league. So you're an asshole and I'm out. What they talking about though? Yeah, why was they beefing? Well, they weren't really. This was actually a preview for a music video for Hire, and that then dropped on Saturday on YouTube uh, during that fight. So people mm -hmm. thought this was a real clip of Eminem talking ish about Dana White, but it was really part of this music video. Now, in addition to this fight that happened on Saturday, Conor McGregor got knocked out. Uh, that was in the second round, and Floyd Mayweather had some things to say about that. Now, he was on social media, and somebody said, why is Floyd Mayweather hated for the way he carries himself? But Conor McGregor is loved for the same way he carries himself. Let's hear your thoughts. And Floyd responded, I've seen this post, and my take on it is that the world knows con artist McLoser can steal everything from me and be loved, but I'm hated. This just lets you know that racism still exists. Just know that bum will never be me or be on my level. I'm just built different. My mindset is on another planet. My skills are second to none. I'm a natural-born winner. And yes, I talk a lot of trash, but every 
time I back it up. This is what they hate. It's sad that you can be a poor black kid from the ghetto that has dealt with racism your whole life and work extremely hard to put yourself and your family in a better position. And most of the hate comes from my own people. Yeah, I just don't remember when Conor McGregor was good. I'm not a UFC watcher, though. So, you know, by the time I started tuning in the UFC, he was just getting his ass kicked every do, time I seen him. Do people like him, though? I, I guess, clearly. He's still a draw, right? You watch UFC, don't you, Dramos? Yeah, here and there. He's a draw. Yeah, he's, he's clearly a, a draw. But is he a draw because people like him, or do they want to see him lose and get beat up? No, nah, I think people liked him. He stopped doing some of the trash talking stuff. It's like over the last couple of years, he kind of fell off. I wouldn't talk trash either if I kept getting my ass kicked. <laughs> after a <laughs> while, <after, after laughs> you got to shut up. He is... He is still planning to fight. Here's what he said. Goodness gracious. This sport is so much better with you in it. Are you telling us that we're going to see you in 2021 in the next few months? Of course. I need activity, guys. Come on. You just you don't get away with being inactive in this business, and that's the way it is. So ah, it's a tough one to swallow. I put in a lot of work. I'm proud of my work. You know, I'd like to, would have liked to represent my team a bit better. We'll get to go again, and that's it. His, his family got something to chill out. I don't care. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I don't care. Well, that really is your r- rumor report. <laughs> Knock yourself out, Connor. <laughs> Literally, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. We got front page news next. What are we talking about? Yes, yeah, somebody won over a billion dollars in the Mega Millions. Somebody won? Yes, man. Mm-hmm. You don't be paying attention to the no. signs? You be, you be damn near about the wreck when you be driving and you see that thing then drop down to 20 million. You're like, let me check my goddamn <laughs> ticket. Damn. All right. We'll get into it next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. 